Here is the iPhone 10, Apple's top smartphone this year and probably the most expensive mass-produced phone ever. It starts at $999 for 64GB of storage and goes up to $1149 for 256GB. Its main appeal is in the controversial new design, which involves only but a very thin frame surrounding the screen and a small cutout, also called a notch, in the top end of the display. Whether the iPhone 10 is worth the insane price tag is one of the biggest questions in mobile this year. So let's take a close look at the new design. It's extremely premium, with the body constructed from glass and stainless steel. It's not a small phone, and it's quite heavy too, but it's pocketable enough to get used to. The front and back glass panels should be durable enough to withstand scratching and friction against surfaces, but don't expect them to survive too many drops. It's glass now, so it can shatter, unlike the metal iPhones from past years. We call this long-awaited new iPhone design controversial because it's definitely not for everyone. The notch aesthetic is very polarizing and while it certainly makes the iPhone X unique and recognizable, we wouldn't say it's particularly pretty. The screen on the iPhone X is a big deal. It's a 5.8-inch OLED panel, a first for Apple. And it has this new extra tall aspect ratio. It's very bright and vivid and has a very high resolution. The OLED technology itself allows for greater contrast and less blur when quick movements happen on screen. Overall, it's a great screen, which considerably improves the viewing experience if you're coming from a 4.7-inch iPhone. Compared to an iPhone Plus, the difference isn't that big. In fact, the 5.5-inch display of the iPhone Plus series with its standard 16 to 9 aspect ratio still offers a slightly bigger display area. And then there is the notch. It's always there and you can't hide it. Basically, you need to learn to live with it. After a while, it stops being too much of an annoyance, but it definitely creates a worse experience than just a normal screen. For example, if you watch YouTube video, you sometimes need to live either with significant black bars or put up with the notch eating into the display. We do hope this design flow is something Apple's looking to address in the future. But why is the notch there in the first place? The answer is Face ID, the new biometric authentication system in iPhone X. As you see now, there are no bezels, so there's nowhere for Apple to put the Touch ID fingerprint scanner. That's why we have Face ID, a sophisticated facial recognition feature that promises to be even more secure and just as effortless. The good news is that Face ID mostly works. Unlike previous face recognition implementations, Face ID creates a 3D map of your face, meaning it can recognize you even when it sees you from a slight angle, up to about 30 degrees. In usual scenarios, Face ID works remarkably well. It's not as seamless as Touch ID yet, but it's very close, and it even doesn't matter if you're in a dark or bright place, Face ID generally works without issues, regardless of the conditions. The lack of a home button also means interaction with this iPhone has to be different from what we know. To help you get around iOS, Apple has created a bunch of new gestures like swipe up from the bottom to go back to home or swipe up and hold to enter multitasking. Getting used to this new way of operation is very easy, mostly because they feel quite effortless. It's not all roses, though, as the new home bar element on the display is needlessly ever-present and not exactly pretty. This, together with the fact that most applications out there aren't yet optimized for the new display, give off the impression that what we're dealing with here isn't quite a finalized product, but something that is yet to reach its full potential. One of the more interesting new software features on the iPhone X are Animoji. Animoji are 3D animated characters that live inside the iPhone X. They smile with you, talk with you, feel sadness, and generally imitate you. So how do they work? Well, they use the uh, front-facing camera here, as well as all the uh, complex sensors uh, right there in the notch, to do some very advanced facial tracking. In this way, uh, the characters can mimic your exact head and face uh, movements. 
an emoji live inside iMessage right here. So uh, in there, basically uh, an iMessage application. So you launch them from here, you can maximize the window. There are a bunch of uh, fun characters like this chicken here. <laughs> and um, so they're mostly meant for you to send them as iMessages, but you can also share them and save them to your gallery as movie clips like this. So let's make a quick movie here. Bam, 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 bam. And that's it. You just send them as a movie like that. And when you press and hold them, press and hold them like this, you can uh, share them and you can also save them to your gallery. So you go in photos, there it is. And obviously from here on, you can just do whatever you wish with this emoji. New iPhones always promised with speed demons and the iPhone 10 fully keeps that promise. With the new 6-core A11 Bionic chipset and an in-house produced GPU, actual performance in iOS 11 is superb. There's barely a hitch as you breeze around the OS. And if you like to play games on your smartphone, you'll be delighted just how smooth and fine everything moves. There's still the problem that most apps and games aren't yet optimized for the big screen, sadly. So chances are you won't be able to fully immerse yourself and enjoy the superb performance. But once developers get this done, then your games will both run and look incredible. The camera on the iPhone X has a humongous camera bump. And while this isn't elegant in any way, it's quite functional. There is still the secondary zoom camera for snazzy looking portrait shots and you can also do those portrait lighting effects too. Both rear cameras are now optically stabilized as well. In terms of image quality, this is just the new iPhone camera. It's great in almost all sorts of conditions. Slightly better than previous generation iPhones and very competitive against other top cameras like the Galaxy S8, Pixel 2 or LG V30. Selfie pictures are great in normal light and just ok at night, where noise starts becoming an issue. There's a promising new portrait mode on the selfie camera, but sadly it doesn't produce good enough results. It just doesn't work as well as the main cameras. A groundbreaking new feature on the iPhone X is the ability to record 4K video at 60fps. But in this mode, video clips come with incredibly large file sizes and like Apple's awesome cinematic video stabilization. For the time being, it might be a good idea to stick with 1080p resolution. Videos will take way less space and they will also look very nice and smooth. The iPhone 10 battery life is a significant upgrade over last year's iPhone 7. The 10 lasts for 8 hours 41 minutes on our battery test while last year's iPhone 7 lasted 7 hours 46 minutes. This is still not quite iPhone Plus level battery life, but it's good. Sadly, if you want to take advantage of fast charging, you'll need to purchase a couple of additional accessories for an extra cost. On the plus side though, there is now support for wireless charging, and you can even use almost every wireless charger that's sold out there. The iPhone X is probably not the best iPhone you can buy right now, but it sure is the most exciting one. We believe the main purpose of the iPhone X is to show us the future of the iPhone, the next chapter in the iPhone story. It feels like a prototype for Apple's next year phone. And that's exactly the problem right now. The iPhone X is a work in progress. And even though it comes at such a high price, we wouldn't say it quite fits into the whole it just works theme of previous iPhones. The iPhone X is an amazing phone, but also a bit of a bumpy ride. If you're willing to live with the compromises of being an early adopter, well, there's nothing stopping you from getting this phone and enjoying it. Aside from those $1,000, of course. Thank you for watching Phone Arena's Apple iPhone X video review. For more, just check us out at phonearena.com.